Okay, so here was the basic matchup in their wrestling match. Behaviorist view. You can already construct what the behaviorist view of language acquisition is going to be, which is you begin to make a sound, attempting to learn a word, and if you say it right, you get rewarded. Ooh, please feed me. Very well said. I'm going to feed you now. And now you've learned to say that. You don't get fed. And you get severely hypoglycemic. And you try to find other until you happen to stumble on the right way to say it. And, whoa, I've been negatively enforced when saying that. And I've been positively and just do that all the time. And that's how I learn language. In a classic behaviorist framework. Chomsky, meanwhile, was taking a stance that this bears no resemblance at all to what is going on. And what we'll see is more versions of his view have prevailed. Basically, the behaviorist view was just sheer raving gibberish, but this produced these fireworks of debates between Skinner and Chomsky in the 60s and 70s. Skinner was at Harvard, Chomsky was at MIT, and they were regularly lobbing missiles across at each other and sort of shooting across their bows and stuff. And this was this huge debate simply because behaviorism was so totally dominating psychology, American psychology at the time with a complete stranglehold that there was Skinner and like three and a half other people out there who had any sort of academic training who would seriously argue that you acquire language through standard behaviorist rules. That was their extreme view and a behaviorist sort of standing in the sand on that one and virtually no evidence for it at all. So what's the Chomskyan view about instead? The very nature of language acquisition shows that it is not behaviorist because of a very significant critical thing that kids do as they learn language. A landmark somewhere along the way, 15 to 20 months of age, this major, major event, the first time a child says a combination of words that it's never heard before. I like chocolate ice cream, says the child. Now you say, ooh, here, there's such a thing as Velcro ice cream. And the child, after tasting it, never before having heard the sentence, I like Velcro ice cream, now says, I like Velcro ice cream. It has just generated a language construction that it has never heard. The generativity of language, the possibility that kids, not only that business a finite number of words, but an infinite number of messages, but at some point, kids do something which is impossible by strict behaviorism. They generate examples of things they have never heard before. And this is, in the Chomskyan view, this inflection point where something explosive exponential occurs. That's where it goes off. And there was a Chomskyite disciple, a guy named Roger Brown, who was a professor for many years at Harvard, who did this insane obsessive study to actually demonstrate what everybody can infer, like if they ever had kids, which was having kids where he and his band of researchers would keep track of every single word kids would say during their first year of life. God knows how the parents put up with these people hanging around in the nursery and stuff. But what they showed was, yes, suddenly you have kids kids generating language constructions that they have never heard before. And Chomsky has advanced a whole view that there is an innate structure to language, and this is one of the key bits of his argument, that right around a certain point of development, kids are able to generalize the rules of language into constructions they have never heard. Moreover, kids are able to generalize the rules of language when they have only gotten imperfect instruction by adults speaking around them who may not be grammatically perfect and one individual may be off here or there in one word, somebody off in another one, if nothing else, not producing every possible combination and out comes a sense of grammar from kids when constructing rules out of imperfect examples and constructing completely novel combinations of words that they've never heard before. 
So the argument that has always been sort of at the core of the Chomskyan view is when kids suddenly explode into this language acquisition, to give you a sense of this, there are long, long stretches where you are learning about 10 words a day during development. By college, typical person has a vocabulary of 60,000 words. You are not going to have gotten those 60,000 from behaviorist reward and punishment stuff. What is this explosion about? And what's always been an argument in favor of the Chomsky notion that there's something innate, there's innate drive towards language acquisition, is what's called the poverty of stimulus argument, which is stated quite simply, kids are generating a lot more examples of language than they're hearing. They're generating all sorts of things that they have never heard. This whole example here, kids have to be learning in some prepared learning ethological way. And that's a term that definitely comes into the field because they are generating constructions they have never heard before. They cannot possibly be taught to do that. And they are not being sat down and being explicitly taught the structure of grammar. They are constructing rules out of imperfect partial examples. So that's always been a very strong argument. And there's always been a counter argument saying that you don't have to have strict instruction of every single type of construction of words that you generate. You can have statistical learning. You can pick up rules from statistical <coughs> patterns. And you can do that with artificial intelligence programs. And you can do that with adults who could pick up patterns. And a number of years ago, extremely cool study showing that kids, way before they start using language, six months of age or so, can actually pick up statistical patterns in language. How would they show this? They would have a whole bunch of nonsense syllables, which they would play long strings in them at these kids, where there would be combinations. These two nonsense syllables, the first one would be followed by the second one 100% of the time. This combination would be followed 90% of the time, this one 75, this one 10%, this one never, and long strings of these, and showing that kids would begin to learn the statistical associations. How do you know? Because you play a novel pairing, you get one of these pairings where 90% of the time you make this sound and it's followed by this on the tape. Now instead you make this sound and it's followed by something it's never associated with and the kid's heart rate increases because this is a novel combination and it is not an all or none. It is merely a statistical linking of the two. So really young kids can do statistical learning, picking up statistical patterns and language very different than people would have guessed.